We're at it again. Hi. Along with half a million people in the UK every summer, we're, we're back, back motorhoming. Motor Living on the open road. <laughs> oh, there was a noise oh, back there, jump. definitely. Appreciating nature's beauty. <gasps> oh, isn't that amazing? And joining a community of devoted motorhomers. Could we be super nosy and have a little look? Absolutely, yeah, sure. yes. Yeah. Oh, this is magical. Look at this. On me head, son, on me head. With me, Paul Merton. <laughs> and me, Suki Webster. <laughs> have you finished your coffee? Have I done what? Have you finished your coffee? So jump aboard for some more great British adventures. I've got a surprise for you. Mm -hmm. Boom! <laughs> Mastering new oh. skills. All right, come by. All right. Ha <laughs> ha! Collecting tip top tips from kings and queens of the road. Velcro strip on the back, sticks to your wall. You're never going to lose it. And inspecting all the latest gadgets. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into gear. Oh, it's not doing anything, hang on. For another great motor home in adventure. That is beautiful, isn't it? Yes, I could see a bit more of it if you didn't have your head in the way. Yeah, that's a shame, isn't it? <laughs>Let's go explore. Oh, look. Now, those are appreciative there's noises. No, there's no actual bedroom this time. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, it does so seem bigger. That must make into a bed, unless this one makes into a bed. One of them does. Can we have a look at... In that here? must be the bathroom, I would have thought. Oh, that's very nice. Could you just step in for a moment? That's right. Step in, just want to see what the room's like. <laughs> I had a feeling I was going to get left in here. Oh, that's better. <laughs> so, WD-40 for your hips in the morning. Dare you. <laughs> There's a hammock here. Suki? <gasps> what? Oh. What? It's a manual. It's a manual? Yeah. Ah. That means I'm doing all the driving. Cos I never took a test on a manual. <laughs> ah. When did you last drive a manual? Oh, about 12 years ago. So this is going to be exciting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, my driver. Thank you. Please continue. That's not how I'm seeing it. Oh, how are you seeing it? It means if I'm driving... I'll get you a special cab. I decide you where can be we the go, chauffeur. when we go, yeah. what we're doing, and it means all other household chores are yours. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't take a test in household chores. No. no, I did, but I failed it three times. But that much we know. That much we do know. Mm. Carry on with the drive, please. <laughs> Little chauffeur's cap. Oh, yes. I could call you Henderson. Off you go, Henderson. I wouldn't mind a little cap. We'll find you a chauffeur's cap. OK. Yeah. Handbrake, handbrake. This is... Oh, oh, oh hey. There we go. Although Paul can't drive a manual, for our next trip, I'm sure it won't be too difficult to upgrade to a more useful model. That's the motorhome, not Paul. Just as well I didn't hear that. This week we're in the New Forest. We start off in Brockenhurst, where we swap four wheels for two. And I make a new friend in the New Forest, a pony called Ruby. We'll stay at a campsite surrounded by fallow deer and then tomorrow we'll be learning all about beekeeping. 
Finally, we'll head to the historic Beaulieu Estate where we'll be adding another string to our bow with a spot of archery. But first, we must make a crucial decision. We will need to name the new motorhome. The way the gears are arranged, perhaps we could call it Manuel. <laughs> I quite like that. Quite like Manuel. OK, Manuel for Manuel. In very well to... Hey! <laughs> We're going to fall out if you keep doing I'm that. Gonna, oh, listen, I'm going to leap out if you keep doing that. Never mind fall it's out. How, it's what happens when you go into second gear. <laughs> you know, am I to be castigated for, for clinging on to life? You're going to be castrated for clinging on to life in a minute. OK, I promise you, no more verbal outbursts. I'll have to just find another way of expressing my terror. <laughs> Despite my mock terror, I'm in more than capable hands with Suki driving. We're approaching the beautiful village of Brockenhurst. And that's my cue to look up some facts about this stunning part of the world. Brockenhurst, or Brock, to the locals, is a red brick village in the centre of the New Forest. It is encircled entirely by National Park Heathland an ancient forest. A ford runs through the middle of the village and the high street boasts fantastic butchers, hello. bakers and independent hello, shops. Hello, I'm a high street. I have a fantastic butchers. That's the high street boasting. Yeah, I was going to do that joke. Well, too late. Ha-ha! <laughs> Despite Manuel's many charms, we're heading to pick up a new form of transport that can help us navigate the forest footpaths. Just down here is a place where we can hire bicycles. So uh, great way to get into the forest. Get into the forest, close to the nature, park this up somewhere. Here's a good place, and uh, yeah, get on a bike, go cycling. Yes, yes. It's just up here, I think. Perfect. Just check. All yeah, secure. That's locked. Brilliant. Oh, there's a guy there. We hey. were wondering if we could hire some bikes. Cool. So we've got two bikes here, or we've got a tandem, all out ready. <laughs> What would you prefer? <laughs> Tandem. That'll be funny. Well, let's have a look at it. Thank now, which you. way does this go on? OK, ready? Here we go. Okay. Oh, hello. Hang on. Right. OK, Woo! here we go. Thanks, Ollie. See you later. Cheerio. Have a good time. I'm sure we will. I may not be able to drive a manual vehicle, but you never forget how to ride a bike. cycle for a while, I can begin to feel on the muscles. My yes, legs. me too. And this tandem is definitely more of a workout than a normal bike, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose the weight of it. Yeah. Beautiful old oaks. The new forest network of flat pathways makes it a cycling paradise. How peaceful. But we're about to make that paradise a little less peaceful. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, do. I'm half crazy, all for the love of you. It won't be a stylish marriage, we can't afford a carriage. But you'll look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle made for two. Poor, I hope the honeymoon's not too far away, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I won't have the strength to get up the stairs. You've got to carry me over the threshold if it's a honeymoon. Oh, blimey, really. We'll get off the bike first. <laughs> it's like that old joke. Well, it says to the old man, it says, take me upstairs and make love to me. So, well, I can do one or the other, <laughs> but not both. Suki and I aren't the only people who've been bitten by the motorhoming bug. Sales of new motorhomes in the UK are topping a billion pounds a year. We're taking our motorhome around some of the most stunning locations in the UK. This week we're in the glorious New Forest, which was designated a national park of outstanding natural beauty in 2005. Although wild camping and overnight stays in forest car parks are not allowed, there are a number of campsites in the New Forest where you can spend the night amongst the fabulous wildlife. We've stopped off to look at the ponies and to have a cup of coffee in our own personalised mug. And talking of a personalised mug, not only am I doing all the driving, I'm making the coffee as well. Hmm. Do you need me to help you with anything? Yes. Good, I'll be here then. 
Do you want oat milk or normal milk? Um, oat milk, I think. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder how you manage to milk an oat. Probably get a really small stool and just sort of sit underneath it and just sort of... Seems a lot of work. Oh, thank you so much. Just need to let it brew for a little mm. bit now. <laughs> I wonder if you press that and something out in the corner blows up. Ah, beautifully done. I've been, obviously, I'm aware of the New Forest for a long time. I know of the New Forest, but I've never been here. Have you been here before? Yes. I came here with my dad and his rugby club. Yes. Yes. W were you the mascot? Can, whoa, whoa. No, you can imagine the joys of a holiday or a long weekend with your father and his rugby club. Why did they come here? Um, they did what is known as a hash run, which is where they put flour on a track and everybody runs and follows where the little flower right, piles yes. are. Uh -huh. And it's a, a race. And then in the evening, mm. they were all at gone midnight outside swimming naked and singing rugby songs. I mean, how traumatic is that for a 12, 13 year old? Pretty traumatic, I would have thought. <laughs> how, how, how long do you spend looking out the window? Not long. No, trust me, that was not a sight I wanted to see. My dad and his rugby club pals screaming and shouting and dive bombing each other naked in the pool. Mm. This coffee's made a terrible stain in the bottom of the cup. That's all right, cos you're on washing up duty, so you can get rid of it. OK, fantastic. Yep, yep. Well, that was great. Thank you so much for mm, that. Pleasure, my darling. That was really nice coffee. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> I did, really. Good, good, good. For lovers of good coffee, you'll want the best cup possible. So we've asked some of our motorhome aficionados to give us their opinions on the latest coffee-making gadgets. One of the simplest is the V60 dripper. Yeah. Filter, so... So it's plastic. Sits on top of your mug. Filled with coffee grounds. And then we've got some hot water here. And then it just drips through the filter like that. Yeah. Great. That was just mega quick. That's good, smooth, very strong. <laughs> Do you think? Great, yeah. Even though you live in a van, I think it's still... You can still have nice coffee. Mm. I would oh, yeah. say 7 out of 10 straight yeah. away. I think 7. Yeah. I'll give it 9. I can't think R of it really? better, yeah. I think I'd be more of a 7. 10 out of 10, cos it's easy. A lot of positives, but how will they fare with our next gadget? The AeroPress Go. It looks quite intimidating, yeah. because it's like, where do, where do you begin? Where, where do you, yeah. Oh, I've got a clue. Once you've worked out how to put it together, it forces water under pressure through the coffee and filter for a cafe-quality cuppa. Can I just say, yeah. for all of that effort, it was worth it. This is much better. It is much better. I would say five out of ten. Five sure? out of ten. Sure. Yeah. Five out of ten. <laughs> All right. I'd give this an eight out of ten. Worth it if you're really into your coffee, maybe. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It works for some people, but not for me. I wouldn't want this, no. Five? Yeah. I wouldn't want really? it. Really? Yeah. I would give that a nine. Lastly, the Rakeiko Nano Presso, a portable espresso machine. I like the little bag it comes in. It's quite nice. weighty, but it's nice and compact as well. So it doesn't need filters, this one. Oh, oh OK. Lens. Oh, that's like a camera lens. I think this is your cup. Once you've done a degree in engineering, you pop in the coffee and water and then pump to hopefully deliver the perfect espresso. It's like a little workout. Keep going. I just really like the high-quality look of it, and it just looks so cool. So I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I, I think it looks the part, but it wasn't quick, easy. I'm going to say 4 out of 10. I'd give it a 5, because it is, it is really good quality. What do you think? Men's gadget. This is nobody's gadget. <laughs> I want something that's simple, quick, easy to use. 3 out of 10. So, some good advice about getting a great cup of joe on the go. Would you like to hear some new forest facts? Yeah, and you could hint and see if I can guess the right answer. OK, all right. 
Who named the new forest Nova Foresta in 1079? Ah, oh, well, that's got to be one of the Normans, hasn't it? Let's, uh, let's say it's William the Conqueror, because he's the only Norman I can name, apart from Norman Mailer. A Norman... Beautiful ponies. Absolutely. Norman called William. Yeah, William the Conqueror, that's absolutely right. Yes. One for <laughs> me. He, one for you. He claimed it as his new personal hunting forest, which meant all the animals in it were only allowed to be shot by himself and his officers alone. Adding to the native population of wild ponies and boosting his hunting stock, William the Conqueror introduced fallow deer to the new forest. Here we are, here's some information. There okay. are 5,000 new forest ponies dotted all over the National Park. 5,000? There have been new forest ponies in the New Forest Hampshire since the end of the last ice age. Oh, my stars! Although the new forest ponies roam freely around the National Park, they are actually owned and cared for by locals called New Forest Commoners. And I've arranged to meet two of them, who will introduce us to their ponies. This looks like a good place to park. Mm-hmm. Well done. Mm. Very good. Hello? Are you Ollie and Tess? Yes, that's oh, right. Oh, hello. We were interested to hear a bit more about the uh, new forest ponies. Oh, I see. Well, you come to the right place. <laughs> good. Oh, thank you. Good. Good. Commoners Tess Tidman and Ollie Cook explain the meaning of the term. We're commoners, which basically means we've got um, a right attached to, to the land that we rent, which allows us to turn ponies and cattle out onto the new forest. Now, I've never seen this being done before, this putting the, a, a, a shoes onto a, a horse. Um, it doesn't hurt, obviously. It doesn't, no. Yeah. A bit like toenails for, for human beings. <laughs> Just like that, yeah, yeah. Ollie and Tess She's often around. employ Ben Mansbridge, a local farrier, highly adept at working on the hoof. Do we know how, how far back this practice goes? This is, this cent this is centuries old, presumably. It goes right back to the Greeks. Does it? Oh, yeah. it does it. Originally, they made um, sandals for their horses, so, and then they learnt that the Iron Age came and they could use horseshoes and... It's pretty much been the same uh, ever since. We've and just... why the burning? How does that That's help? the shape of the shoe, so we can ah. get it the correct shape. Farriers complete a four-year apprenticeship, but the horses know what they have to do straight away. It's like you're talking and she knows exactly she, what you she want. She does, she understands. So, generally, I will literally put my hand on here first just to let her know that I'm here so I don't spook her when yes. I ask for a leg, and then a little click, and she knows to pick yes. her foot up. So, would any of you like to have a go? I'll have a go, if yeah? I'm allowed. Yeah, OK, follow me. Oh, be, yeah. be careful what you would you agree to him. I'll be trying to put a shoe on you. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a formal introduction So, this first? is Ruby. Hey, Ruby. He's very sweet. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. Hey, buddy. So, Hello, what I'll do is I'll show you, Hello. basically, how we take a horseshoe off. Yes, sorry. I'll pay That's attention to you. That's absolutely fine. You have to pop the chaps on. Oh, OK. Oh, I've got a costume. <laughs> and then you've got the Velcros between the legs. There we go. <laughs> do I look like the real thing, Ruby? Perfect. Do you feel happy? <laughs> and then what do you do? Pop you it between it. your legs, so fold your leg over. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit tricky. E That's not easy. No. Didn't realise fires oh. are quite so flexible. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Once you've got the pinches on it, Hang on, you can I've get got both. It. There you go. Pinch them as tight as you can and then pull it forward as hard as you can. And it will pop oh, off. Hey, well done. <laughs> First time. You can let her foot go now. Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> oh. Perfect. Can well I done. Give that Very good. Let's congratulate you. Well done, sweetheart. Oh, I'm a bit in love with you. Very good. You really helped Would me. Would you like didn't to keep you? that shoe at all? Oh, can you I? You can keep that one, oh, yeah, and you can take then? it with you if you'd like. That's a proper bit of lucky. Great. Oh, terrific. There you go. I wonder why horseshoes are considered a, a lucky thing. Do you know? The old original tale of blacksmiths and the devil is that the devil was a cloven animal. Yes. And on his travels, his hoofs got sore, so he went and saw the local blacksmith. And the blacksmith put a pair of hot shoes on him and sent the devil screaming off on his way. So every time he hears the ring of an anvil or a horseshoe, the devil runs the away. The devil goes. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Ah, so that's where the lucky comes from. That's where from. the luck comes from. Yes. Oh, I wish I could take you with me. Be a bit conspicuous inside the motorhome. <laughs> <laughs> Having spent a delightful afternoon with my new friend Ruby, we're heading to our campsite for the night. 
looks like the right place. Mm. Hiya. Hello there. How hello, are you? Hello. Good, thank you. you have How a good journey? Yeah, yeah good, thanks. Lovely. Good. And... Now, we've got a pitch, I believe, for the night. You have, yeah. You're going to be down on pitch 31. Cheers, thanks, thanks a lot. Enjoy your evening. Thank I'm sure you. we will. Motorhoming is joyful, but it seems there's always a job to do. It's important to check the level in your water tank. It's like Laurel and Harding. It is a little bit. Tell me when you're ready. I can see the gauge. But it's best not to fill up the tank completely. A full tank will send your fuel consumption through the roof. Uh, that's, that's, that's 50, that's 50%. I think that'd be enough, didn't you? So half full will do us nicely. Normally they talk about good Wi-Fi connection, not, not good water Get hose pipe connection. All settled in, it's time to meet some other motorhomers. Shall we, uh, shall we go over and have a little, uh, little chat? Yeah. Because I, I, like, I do like the idea of that awning. Yeah, it me just sort of, too. It sort of trebles your space, doesn't it? Yes. Hello. Hello. Hello there, we, hi. We've been admiring your awning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm come Suki, in? this is Paul. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Hello Hi, there. Yeah. Do you come in? Oh, thank you. I'm you want... Nicola, this is JP. Oh, lovely to meet you. I see you've got some beers going. <laughs> How beautiful. That's part and parcel of the camping, really. <laughs> Yeah, what's Seems really nice about this, because I've been looking at these these awnings, is that you sort of like you can get outside of your your vehicle, and just and it doubles the space, doesn't it? Yes. Well, you yes. can, and and also the awning is a standalone awning, so you can we can uh, leave it yes. here and go um, right. for a day trip somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you haven't got to rig it up again. No. Yeah. No. Nope. Very good. So you're clearly with this setup, you've been doing this a while then. Well, we started in 2015, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And we bought our first motorhome in September 2015, and by Boxing Day 2015, we'd lost our first motorhome in the floods. Oh! Oh, yeah. my stars. So where do you live? We live in uh, Bingley in West Yorkshire. And the whole... Yeah, we'd Bingley got parked flooded. in a secure unit next to the River Air. But yeah. Oh, oh we no. lost it. Yeah. yeah. It was about three quarters. And was your home home okay? That was part. Oh not... yes. Yeah. Yeah. We were nowhere so near yeah. that. You yeah. weren't. Yeah. 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 It was just homeless it, without a motor. It taken eighteen months to persuade me to buy one. Oh no. And then it went oh, absolutely oh, oh, devastated. No. Yes, it must have been really dreadful. Mm. Well, it was. But since then, we've we've um, we keep upgrading, upgrading, and we've had we've had uh, five now. There was one year prior to COVID, and we went out uh, 18 times mm -hmm. in a year. <gasps> yeah, we, mm. yeah. A any opportunity, and we, ju we just uh, we just yes. go. What is it about motorhoming that you 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 particularly like? Just the freedom. Mm. You can you can be having a horrendous week, but you just Thursday night just say, yeah, right, yeah. we're going to go for the weekend. But the people we've made. We've made friends for mm. life with. Yeah. Yes. And you oh. By the way, my mother loves you. <laughs> oh, good, but you couldn't care less. <laughs> <laughs> We've spent a comfortable night at Long Meadow Campsite, just north of Brockenhurst in the New Forest. While we've slept well, packing up in an unfamiliar motorhome is a little trickier than usual. All the bedding's out, you can use this as a hanging cupboard. Right, OK. But you can't have both. I see. This is what Suki's like after two cappuccinos. In our motorhome, the U-shaped lounge converts into a super king-size bed, a real luxury. But it can pose a challenge when you don't quite know how it folds away. Should I do it up for you? No. No? <laughs> I'll sit here being helpful. Um, I can supervise. I tell you what, what, can you move again? Move again, yeah. Shall I stand outside? I'll go outside. I'll go outside. I'll go outside. I'll go outside. That's where you're useful. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, just, I'll just tidy up out here. You just look pretty. Look pretty? Yeah, OK. <clears throat> Motorhomes come in all shapes and sizes. To know which configuration suits you best, our experts have some top tips. My tip really would be, if you're considering building your own van or buying a van, 
Think about what you're going to use it for, whether you want to spend your life outside, like some of the guys on sites you'll see, whether you want to live inside the van, whether you want toilets, whether you want showers, whether you want to use facilities on campsites, or whether you want to be the sort of person that goes off-grid um, for short periods or long periods. We travel with our two dogs, and one of the most important things for us was being able to shut them away. So what we did was cut our bed in half, created a kennel area at the front, and he just goes in there when we're traveling around, driving, and we just uh, close the doors, good boy. And he keeps them out away, nice and safe. Back in our motorhome, I've transformed our bedroom into a lounge again. Those can stay so We're nearly there. there, though, aren't we? Yeah. Well, you're nearly there, you've done it all. But uh, I've been out here keeping up morale. <laughs> And the campers thank you for it. Yes, they do, actually. I mean, I, I didn't want to say anything earlier, but somebody came over from one of the other motorhomes and said, can I just say, it's, a be a, it's an absolute pleasure to be alive at the same time as you. <laughs> I think it's a pleasure for all of us. Anyway, it's time to get back on the road. We're heading east to learn all about the art of beekeeping and then sampling some honey. Then, with honey on board, we all head to the historic village of Bewley to try our hand at archery, a practice that brought down a king in the New Forest. But first, Paul has some more interesting facts about the area. There's a 7,000-acre Bewley estate which has been in the ownership of the Montague family for over 400 years. Mm. It also says, Bewley has no cattle grids which means there are often many of the famous free roaming New Forest ponies and groups of donkeys around. <laughs> a group of donkeys, so is that the collective noun for donkeys? I don't donkeys? know that it is. <laughs> a school of donkeys. Consortium. A consortium of donkeys. Yes. A six-pack of donkeys. An association of asses. Association of asses? Yeah. The AA. Yeah. One collective noun I do know is a swarm of bees, which is useful because we're heading to the noble bee at Furzdown Farm, which has 70 hives housing up to 5 million bees. So this is it, I suppose. Well, this is exciting, isn't it? Isn't it just? We're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Oh, I think I can see beekeepers ahead. Simon Noble is an award-winning apiarist, or beekeeper, and Chloe is his apprentice. Hello. Hi, hello there. Hi, yeah. hello there. How are you doing? Good. Good. Simon, nice to meet you. Oh, Hi, Simon. Nice to this meet is you. Uh, Chloe. Hi, I'm Chloe. I'm Suki. This is Paul. So, yeah, so, you've got a couple of bee suits. Hopefully, we've got the right sizes. Right. Um, smoker to pacify the bees, um, and then some Good. gloves as well to put on. Due to the loss of their natural habitat, the bee population is dwindling, despite the fact there are 200,000 beehives in the UK. Firstly, they pollinate a third of everything we eat, so a third of everything that goes that we eat is pollinated by bees. Right. So they're really important to feed the population of the planet. Uh huh. Um, and then that has a knock-on uh, effect to the economy as well. And are bees under threat due to sort of like you know chemicals on farmland and stuff? Um, so yeah, there's sort of obviously our natural environment has changed quite a lot over the last yes. sort of couple of hundred years. So. Uh -huh. So since World War II, we've actually lost 97% of our wildflower meadows, which is actually a staggering amount. Yeah. Paul, you've actually put your leg in one of the arm pieces there. <laughs> so that's why it looks a little bit tight. He's always doing comedy, even when he doesn't mean to. Yes. <laughs> that's a polite way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, it fits, though. I think it suits you, actually. It's it does, yeah. It's a little bit yeah. tight. OK, so I'm going to boots <laughs> back off. <laughs> just as well, this is a six-part series. <laughs> It'll take me that long to get this on. <laughs> Once we're properly dressed, we head towards the hives. The smoke masks the bees' pheromones, making them unable to coordinate an attack. So these top three boxes are actually the honey boxes, mm -hmm. and that's where they're storing the honey. So if you like, we can have a look, look, quick glance in there. Yes, please. When I prize it up, you can just do a couple of puffs in there if you like, Suki. There you go. So what I do is I just take a, one frame out to see how they're getting on, see if they're producing any honey, and they should be because it's, we're right in the middle of the summer nectar flow. Right? Oh, and it's covered in bees. At the height of summer, there's around 35 to 40,000 bees in a colony, which can get pretty noisy, so they communicate by movement in a kind of dance. 
a single hive can produce up to 60 pounds or 27 kilos of honey. Honeybees don't hibernate during winter. Instead, they cluster together to stay warm and eat the honey. But they only need around 20 pounds of honey, so the rest is surplus, which is great news for us non-bees. That one there, you can see. Yes. Is wow. basically oh, capped honey, beautiful. full of capped honey, so that one's actually ready to be extracted. Uh-huh. Um, do you want to feel, feel the weight of that, Paul? OK, yeah. You might be surprised how heavy it is. Oh, it is, yes. So yeah. that's, the, that's the honey that's, that's, that's weighing that. Exactly, that. yes. So I'll put that back in because the, the bit of the hive that we want to look in, really, is the bottom box, which is called the brood box, and that's uh -huh. where the queen bee lives, and that's where the production of the colony takes place. Pull it back into the space and then gently... There you oh go. Oh, my stuff. Wow. That is so many bees. Shall I put it back? Yeah, put it back. Does in. it just slide in any particular yeah, way? Yeah, place it in nice and slowly. I think you're a natural beekeeper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can't beat a drop of new forest honey. It's so yes. delicious. Yes. Uh -huh. um, I mean, this, the honey that these guys are making is, is lovely wildflower honey, so there'll be nectar from hundreds of different flowers going into this. Mm. Actually, you're lucky, guys, because in my pocket, I have for you two jars of the noble oh. bee. Oh. Honey. Thank you. So here we have a pure new forest heather honey. Mm -hmm. So that's the nectar from just heather. Mm -hmm. And this one is a wildflower honey from these hives which Chloe extracted last week. Oh, thank you, you can so enjoy much. those on your toast yeah. tomorrow. Thank you so Brilliant. much. Look at that. We're motorhoming around the beautiful new forest. And one of the many joys of a motorhome is the ability to stop for an indoor picnic. And with some new honey to try, that's exactly what we're doing. So if I start bread and honey and you put the table out? Yeah. Oh, look. What? The breadboard folds. Oh, folding mm -hmm. breadboard. I've Ooh, done something well practical. Done. Well done. Oh, my God, that's good. Mm. That's really different to shop bought. Mm. Mm. Wow. That was a new forest wildflower. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the heather honey, which is a, as you can see, a completely mm. different colour, much lighter. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a stronger taste. You've put way more on. That's probably it, then, isn't it? <laughs> I think the other one's winning for me. I mean, they're both lovely. They are both lovely. I mean, this is a, uh, it's rather wonderful, isn't it, to be able to just uh, pull up off the main mm. road, have a, a, an impromptu lunch. Mm. Surrounded by ponies and gorse and bracken. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. And amazing that we saw the bees that created this earlier. I know. I know. We met them. I wonder if it's from that actual hive. Well, it's... I wonder also, how do they know where the bees are flying? Do you mean to make, to know that they're getting different honey from different hives? Do they choose bees that are particularly heather bees? Or oh, I don't, I don't know. Perhaps they, 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 they strap tiny cameras to their backs. <laughs> or they have to dance it for them. My waggle dance is legendary, mate. Mm. I could direct you to London from here. Could you? No. Do you want to see? <laughs> Go on, then. I'm, and I'm... I avoided the M25. <laughs> I thought I got caught a glimpse of the Hangar Lane gyratory system. <laughs> <laughs> After sampling some of the delicious local produce, we're eager to head out and learn more about the area. OK, the Rufus Stone marks the bracket alleged spot where King William II was shot and killed with an arrow in 1100 AD. I thought Rufus Stone was going to be a man. No, he's not. No. He's a stone. <laughs> Would you like me to carry on with the, the, the interesting facts? Please do. The story goes that an arrow was shot at a stag by the king's best archer, but the arrow ricocheted off an oak tree straight into the chest of the king. That's How can an said. arrow ricochet? Well, uh, I suppose it, it can bounce off something, can't it? Sounds a bit unlikely. I think that's... yes. That's very unlikely. I wonder how many witnesses were to this. It sounds like a hit job yes, to me. Yes, that's exactly what it was. Whoever fired that arrow set it up and said, oh, a tree got in the oh, way. Oh, sorry, King. Sorry. So I was aiming it at the bounced stag. bounced off the tree. Tree got in the way, hit you in the oh. chest, sorry. And I've had an idea that might help to clear up the mystery. 
but we do need an expert opinion on this. So right. what I've done uh, is I've organised for us to have a little go at, uh, at a bit of archery. Seriously? A, yeah, yeah, a proper sort of expert. Uh, bow and arrow, targets. The, no, no kings will be injured during this particular <laughs> activity. Um, oh, that's a fantastic idea. Hello. Hi. Hello yeah. there. Very Hi nice there. to meet you. I'm Amy. Hi, Amy. Hi. Hi, hello. Welcome. Come on in. Amy is one of the main archery instructors at the New Forest Activity Centre. So how are we holding it? So we're holding it like that in that yep. left hand. And then and... just pull, yeah. OK. So, archery. Archery's pretty cool. It's got a long history yeah. through everywhere in the world. Someone worked out that if you string something stringy and you, you can use it to flick things. Um, and the British might not be very good at very many things, but we were very good at archery, famously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of the reasons is in the 13th century, it was declared law that you had to practice your archery before you went to church on a Sunday, including the ladies. Um, that was because basically the king was very worried that the French were on their way. So, loading a bow, turn your knuckles up to the sky. Mm -hmm. You see this little rest here? That's where your arrow is going to go. So days. it's like a snooker cue, sort of. Exactly, yeah. That's a lovely analogy. Can I nick that? Please it's do. Lovely, I'm having that. <laughs> Great. Not only do you need a good aim, you also need to strike a pose. Once you're there, make sure your stance is right. Again, this is about looking cool. Um, if you're here, yeah, you're <laughs> really hard look. work. You really want to be like full on sideways, yes. hips nice and far apart. Okay. It gives you the position to be able to put that arm right out and take your Yes, and you look properly strong. It means I can lift up with my front arm straight and pull all the way back to my face. <gasps> Very good. Pretend someone's behind you and you're elbowing them in the face. It means you can look straight down the arrow. Hit my nose with your elbow. Okay. Yeah. Strong, strong. Well, I hit the ball. Yeah, yeah. not bad at all. Good. Hold that arm straight out. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. And get this elbow right back. Oh, it didn't hit the target, did it? Yeah, you're a little bit... Um, a bit tight there. ...gentle. Elbow up. Nice. Oh, you've... you've, you've I keep uh, consistent. You're, you're yeah. very consistent. Okay. So front arm as straight as you can get it. Back arm as back, 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 back. Further, further, further. Yeah, that's better. Yes, Whoa. I told you. Oh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Get in. Let me have a go. No pressure, Siki. Yes! Ha ha! Bullseye! Suki hit the bullseye, but what about the bloke who hit poor old King William? Was it a deflection or an assassination? We saw a story earlier about uh, William II who apparently died when somebody was uh, yes. attempting to shoot a deer or something and the arrow bounced off a tree and then pierced his... Is that possible? Uh, I, it's very unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we uh, thought. We yeah. reckoned that somebody assassinated him and just went, tree in the way. Pretty much is... I think most historians kind of think he was his, his assassinated. And, it's a hit job. Uh, yeah. it's a, it was um, not wanted, yeah. Yeah. But... History clarified, it's time to head to a new campsite remembering that the ponies always have the right of way. As we drive through the New Forest, it's a bit like a safari park for horses, isn't it? Do you know, uh, funnily enough, this bit particularly, mm. I was just thinking... Were you? Yes, the, the landscape was vaguely like a safari. Yes. Right, Animals in their natural up. habitat. Yes. Yeah. <gasps> Are they going to cross? Come on, little ones. Oh, isn't that amazing? Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. That is great. That little one, look. Coming over for the water, <laughs> I think. Hello. Oh, I love that. That little one is so cute. Wow. Oh, the waters too. There we wow, are. wow. Wow, wow. They're exciting. Better, That's beautiful, we? isn't it? Yeah, absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. That was a bit of luck. Yeah, yeah. Now we're heading into a campsite here, Sethorn's campsite. This is a bit more, even more back to nature, a little bit further ah. into the new forest. 
25 miles an hour, so we'll take it nice and slow. Absolutely. As we arrive at our campsite for the night, we encounter a common problem for motorhomers. I'll get the chocks. If the ground is uneven, levelling ramps will set you straight. And this is a theory, because obviously we've never done this. No, exactly. Uh, right, I'm going to put this... ..there. Yeah. It's about a hand's length. Right. That's my theory. Oh, I see what you're doing, yes, OK. We'll find out. OK, so I'll sit at the table with the spirit level and see what happens. Sure, sure. Steps have different levels to adapt to the gradient of the ground. OK, I've got a spirit level here. So I'm going to have to very, very slowly... OK. Oh, oh you, were near the, you were nearly in the middle, then. A further bit. Good. The middle one is in the middle. Oh, that's the bottom one's in the middle. Good. Yeah. That's a result. After a long day, our time in the new forest draws to a close. Suki! Champagne! <gasps> yes, 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 yes. Care for yes, some? Yes. Cork game? Cork game. OK, all right then, here we go. Oh, it's a bit, uh, a bit tight. <laughs> Another result of the day. Fantastic. Perfect. Cheers. Hang on. What? <laughs> I need a glass. You got the cork. Well. Oh, well, let's, uh, you know, pop in. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, the end of a lovely day. Another busy day. Tiring. Yeah, Tiring. but great. Mm. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Best pub in the world. Mmm. Not so noisy either. What time does the disco start? It's closing time, the end of a great day packed with ponies and archery. Lights out. And I do hope that none of the arrows I fired today ricochet back. Good night. Good night, love. Oh, I've got something in my hair. <laughs> that pimple's got worse. <laughs> Oh, look, I can use it as a pointer. No, no. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's the saying over there. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Next time, back in an automatic, we're on the road in fabulous Devon. Oy, yes, sir. We'll be finding out what makes the perfect cream tea. I prefer to put the jam on first and yes. then the cream, but I don't think that is the correct way. That's the Cornish way, then and repainting some of the local residents. The original one of those is insured for a million pounds. Yes. <laughs> and that's new motorhoming with Merton and Webster next Sunday at nine. Having written some of the catchiest tunes for the biggest stars, we celebrate the legends of pop, Stock Aiken Waterman, brand new next Saturday at 8.30. Next tonight, grab some well-needed vitamin D. We're checking into the jewel of the Costa Crown, Hotel Benidorm for sun loungers and sangria.